Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, ophthalmologist and lover of all things beauty, and today we are talking lash extensions. Now, I know I've talked about lash extensions before, but it's a little different this time. We're going to be talking about do lash extensions actually cause your natural lashes to get short and stubby from my personal experience, as well as looking at the science behind it. So if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. So you guys might know I was doing lash extensions for about six months. I loved them. They look amazing. And I live in Hawaii where I go to the beach a lot. I'm not going to put on mascara to go to the pool, but my lashes look bald. Like right now I'm not wearing anything on my lashes. I just feel like, you know, having extensions makes your eyes pop. Now, about five years ago, the American Academy of Ophthalmology was completely against lash extensions and they said that you shouldn't get them done. Now they've changed and softened their stance over the last few years. So now they just basically say, make sure you go to someone reputable, which is great. And make sure that you understand what kind of ingredients are in the lash glue, which we're going to be discussing and the potential side effects and harm. So for the last three months, because everything has been uh, closed around here, I have not been able to do lash extensions. So all of my lashes extensions fell out. And then like you've probably heard a million times from other people, the natural lashes looked really short and stubby. Now this can be two reasons. Is the extension actually causing your natural lash growth to be inhibited? Number one, that's one possibility. Or is it causing your natural lash to break and fall off? That's another possibility. If you don't want to watch the full video, I'll give you the answer. Maybe. There. Does that help? I know some people don't want to watch the whole video, which is fine. I'm like that too. My attention span is very short. Okay. So why maybe? I think there's a couple ways that it actually can cause your lashes to fall out. If you have lash extensions that are too heavy or misapplied to your natural lash, then for sure they can cause a lot of weight onto your lashes and then cause them to break and fall off, especially if they are depositing or if they're applying too many and they're not doing a one-to-one -one ratio, then you don't want to do that. So first time I did extensions, maybe about four or five years ago, that's basically what happened to me. I could feel the weight of the lashes. They, I mean, it just, I was always constantly aware that I had extensions on and I could tell that my lashes were falling out more than they regularly would. There is a lash cycle and everybody's lashes are going to fall out. A couple of lashes per month is typical. So the natural lash cycle is about 60 to 90 days. Some people lose one to five lashes a day. I mean, it just depends on the person, depends what's going on hormonally with you, you know, just like hair on your head. There's like a lot of different factors. There can even be nutritional factors that are associated with it. So a lot of different things that can go on, but improperly placed extension can accelerate that lash falling out. Second, what I've also seen a lot of is when women come into the office and I'm examining them at the slit lamp, I see people just are so scared to clean their extensions. And if they don't clean their extensions, what's going to happen is you're going to get that oil buildup at the base of the lashes where your meibomian glands are. That in itself is going to cause inflammation of your eyelid. And when your eyelids are inflamed, you're going to lose lashes as well. So it's not necessarily from the extension itself. It's from improper care of the extension, but you can link it in your mind and think, oh, the lash extension made my lashes fall out. This might also mainly be because you're not cleaning your lashes well. Third, I did say two, but I'm going to go with a third one too. So right now, you look at my lashes pitiful as they are. Um, once my extensions fell out, you are so used to that extra length. Your brain just gets used to it. And when you see your lashes that are much shorter, it seems like they're shorter than normal. Now let's look at the science behind this. Unfortunately, no one has studied this. I couldn't find a single study about lash extension and whether or not it inhibits your lash growth. So there's no studies for it and there's no studies against it. So that basically means neutral. I should totally do a study where I at least measure my lashes before and after and see millimeter wise if I've seen any difference in that. But that study, as simple as it seems like it would be to conduct, has not been done. There are millions of women getting lash extensions done all the time. So I don't understand why there is not more research into this field, but there isn't. I will also tell you one of the reasons I'm probably going to hold off on resuming with extensions 
is because of the glue. We've talked about the glue before. It's cyanoacrylate, which is kind of the same thing as super glue. In itself, we use that in medical grade glues all the time. So cyanoacrylate, we have dermabond, which if you've gotten a cut, sometimes they will just put that dermabond instead of stitching things up. We will even use a version of it when someone has a ruptured globe, like a corneal wound that's open and we'll put it right on the surface of the eye. The problem with the cyanoacrylate is not in the ingredients itself. So when the Academy of Ophthalmology says, check the ingredients, none of the lash loos are going to say the word formaldehyde because they don't contain formaldehyde. But what happens is a lot of the cyanoacrylates, when they are exposed to moisture in the air, they off gas formaldehyde. So that's why your lash artist is typically wearing a mask. I have found now I am very allergic to that fume. And so the last couple times that I've gone in for my extensions, my eyes are just super red. They are tearing constantly. So I know that that's not a good thing for me. If you've had extensions, you haven't had that problem, then you're not allergic to it. But it's not necessarily the glue itself that you're allergic to, but more likely the off-gassing of the glue. And I could even smell it. And I'm just a very sensitive, allergic, atopic individual. So, you know, don't write it all in my comments that I'm fear-mongering. I'm not fear-mongering. The amount that formaldehyde that is off-gassed is considered a safe amount but you should know that that's what's going on. So you guys do what you wanna do with the information that I'm giving you. Personally, if I wasn't allergic to it, I probably would be back in that lash artist chair and getting my extensions done. And I might even go back anyway, because I really do like the look of it. And we'll see if I can get her to change the glue and use something that doesn't off gas quite as much. But it is something that you should be wary of because it's a possibility. And it didn't happen the first time that I went in. It happened maybe about the fourth time when I was going in for my fourth fill-in. So that's how allergies work. You don't necessarily get an allergic reaction the very first time. You can get it the fourth or fifth or 200th time. So just be mindful and have that in the back of your head that that's a possibility. Second, lash extensions might exacerbate dry eyes. And the thought is that your natural lashes are supposed to be about one to three millimeters in length when you are extending them with lash extensions that are possibly five to 10 millimeters in length, you're making this fan, right, on your lashes. And it's then fanning air into your corneas, making your dry eyes worse. That's a thought, again, no science behind it. I've not seen one study that looked at tear film osmolarity, which is one of the objective ways that we can measure how dry a person's eye is and the chemical makeup of their tear foam. Never seen a study which looked at people with lash extensions versus not. Hmm, maybe I should do that study. You can actually find out if it really makes your eyes dry. Or is it because older women are getting it? Who knows? There's so many compounding variables there, but it's a thought. So there's hypothesis that it might make your dry eyes worse. If you get the glue and you're toxic to it, you can get allergic conjunctivitis. Um, you can get swelling of your eyelids, all of that, which is a possible side effect. So does the lash extension actually cause your lash to fall out? Like I said, maybe. As long as you take good care of your lash extensions, go to a lash artist who is reputable, who uses good quality materials and does not place an extension that is too heavy for your lash, I think you'll be safe. Should I do the extensions again? I just, I know I probably will end up doing them again, but I'm gonna take a little break which is also another good thing to do. Give your lashes some time to rest in between. It's just like getting hair extensions. They'll always advise just giving yourself a little bit of a break so your natural hair and your natural lashes can grow. So I'm just nourishing my lashes with a little bit of coconut oil. You could do a lash serum if you want in between some people um, just to make them a little bit stronger and then resume if you want. So. Let me know about your thoughts about lash extensions. I would love to hear it. If you're a lash artist, I know I have a couple lash artist followers. Tell me what you do to make sure that your client's lashes stay safe and healthy. I'd love to hear it. Like I said, I've seen plenty of lashes that look fantastic under the slit lamp, but I've also seen the opposite where people are not caring for them and they look atrocious. Like take a look at my slit lamp right here. This is when I didn't even wash my lashes for just one day. Look at all that buildup and debris that's on there. It's disgusting. Now imagine I've had people that walk in and that have not touched their lashes until they go to their lash artist. So that's like every three weeks. That's not what you wanna do. Clean your lashes. If you need to know how, check out this video.
All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was fun and helpful for you a little bit. I guess it was kind of equivocal, but at least now you are knowledgeable about the potential side effects and what to look out for and what to do so that you don't lose your natural lashes if you decide to get extensions. Once your lashes have fallen, it does take about three months to regrow, and that's because of that lash cycle phase. And everybody's different. Some people's lashes grow faster and slower. Some people grow slower. One thing to note though, as you get older, your hair just does not grow as fast. You probably notice that your eyebrows, I used to have to tweeze them, thread them, wax them all the time, my eyebrows, not my lashes. And now I just don't have as much as, as I used to. So if you're getting extensions and you're older in age, if it is something that's too heavy and it's causing your lash to break, it might leave a bald spot for you because that lash might not regrow because of your, of your age. I'm not trying to scare you, but it's a possibility, okay? For younger people, it's not as much of a risk. So just something to be mindful of. And pay attention to your body. You know, if you go in and your eyes are red and tearing during lash application, or you feel like it just feels like a foreign body in your eyes, or you're constantly aware of the lashes on your eyelids, those are signs that either the application was not correct or you're allergic to the glue. So stop. I know that, you know, I push myself with beauty all the time. Like, oh, but I love it so much. I got to keep going. Just pay attention to your body. I think that's really important for making sure that you keep your eyes healthy because you need them. They don't just look good. They're important for vision too. All right. Thanks you guys for watching. Mahalo.